So this is my current personal rig. As you can see, it's um, a full tower case that's been modded quite a lot. Um, I've done quite a few case mods. Uh, they're pretty old now. I did them a couple of years ago. And this thing is getting a slight bit outdated. Um, it has a i7-4770K processor, Asus Maximus uh, 5 formula? I don't remember which which ROG number board it is, but uh, it's whatever one takes the uh, 4000 Intel series. 16 gigs of RAM, DDR3, because DDR4 was not why I built this. Um, two R9 280Xs, and just a whole lot of case modding, as you can see. Um, this is all acrylic panels that I cut out. Um, my original plan was to do water cooling, so I might like a custom loop, because so as you can see, everything is currently cooled by uh, AIOs. But I planned on having a reservoir on this panel here. There's a cutout for a radiator to go against those fans up there. I was going to put another radiator up here. But uh, that never happened because uh, custom water cooling loops are incredibly expensive. So I just stuck with this. Um, but just to see the case modding here, I have um, on top here I have uh, custom acrylic panels transparent red with holes for air to go through uh, for the fans down below. These are like, um, I forget who made these fans. Um, I got them from Frozen CPU before they closed down, but they have the, all, all the blades are connected on the edge here. There is no separated blades as you can see there. It's a little dusty, um, but that was supposed to mean they have really good stack pressure. I don't really know if that worked, but uh, they're quite expensive. I have an NZXT fan controller. This is originally a five and a quarter inch bay device, but uh, I just cut it out of the um, the metal frame it was in. You can see from the bottom there that it's actually not that thick of a thing, so I just mounted in, into this top panel. This used to be where uh, all the front panel I.O. was, and the start button, the start button was like here, there was like a button for LEDs here, like USBs and stuff here, but I cut that all out. Along the front here, we have more transparent red acrylic. The start button, this is just one of those standard vandal switches. Um, the LED's blown out in it. I uh, accidentally static shocked that like a couple weeks after I bought it, uh, which is good. There's these metal panels around the edges of these acrylic panels just to uh, add the aesthetic. And then just like on top, we have these transparent red acrylic panels with uh, those fans behind it. Now on the inside you can see the uh, where the reservoir was going to go and then the basement. I had in a basement. Before this, basements for cases weren't really um, a thing. Uh, they were only done in modded cases. You couldn't really buy a case that had a basement in it. You could buy cases that had pedestals but not basements. Like the 900D had a pe pedestal that could stand on where you could put the uh, power supply and radiators, but um, most cases didn't come with bases, uh, basements. Um, and the side panel here is just a big old sheet of uh, like five millimeter acrylic. It's just kind of friction fit into the side here. Um, need to grab something to uh, pry that out and then I can show you more of the inside. So on the inside here you can see all the components um, that I mentioned before. I do have one Corsair fan back here, but it's covered up the uh, radiator. Um, everything in here is water-cooled with AIOs, and that's my uh, goal, to remove these and just switch to air cooling. Because uh, I didn't really see that great of a performance uh, upgrade in AIOs versus uh, air cooling. And air cooling is just, just a lot nicer. It's a lot less of a pain to upgrade, and I don't have to worry about these hoses cracking and causing leaks and destroying the whole computer, too. So, I'm going to be removing these. Uh, as you can see, the top one is a H100i for the processor. The top R9280X has a Corsair 140mm. I don't remember what it's called, um, but whatever their 140mm one was, that's it. Then down here, we have the Corsair 120mm one. That just goes into the basement. Air comes in through these fans. 
and then gets sucked up. There's a fan bolt, this one. Gets sucked up into here, and then blown out through here. Now the airflow is a little weird in this case, but it has worked. It doesn't get too hot on the inside. Um, it's mostly based off positive pressure to keep all the dust out, which uh, clear ha clearly hasn't worked that well, but uh, it, it's worked somewhat. So, the first thing I'm going to do is get these graphics cards out, put their old air cooling uh, shrouds back on, and uh, sell them. So I can get a new single graphics card and I don't, and I don't have to deal with this uh, crossfire setup anymore. So this bit's a little sketchy, um, the only way to unscrew this is to take out the whole bottom plate. Um, I don't remember how I got in here, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. So now that that's all out, you can see the bottom of the basement side here, we've got the uh, power supply which is way overkill. I screwed up on some math when calculating how much power this thing required. Um, and now especially considering I'm going to one graphics card, this thing probably only takes up about like 400 watts max. Uh, and I have a 1200 watt power supply, but uh, I don't really see a point in buying a new one considering I already have custom cables for this one. Um, yeah, you can see the power supply in there. And also I have a hard drive cage in here and an LED board, which just basically a breakout board for a Molex connector um, that has a bunch of pins to plug LEDs in, which I forgot to mention are right here. Right here, there's one, you can see the cable for it. There's, those two are white. There's a red one under here, it's meant to make the fans glow. And then, same thing in front here, there's another red one. Um, but yeah, inside the hard drive cage, I have a uh, SSHD. Uh, one terabyte. I have a 120 gig SSD. So that's back when SSDs were actually expensive. And on, around the back here, somewhere, at least I thought I did. Well, I know I do. Oh, there it is. I have another 500 gig uh, SSD that I bought on sale. Um, yeah, that's that's basically the whole thing. So now that this is all torn apart. Let's get the uh, original air coolers back on the graphics cards. Alright, so now I can start to uh, put the old coolers back on these things. Um, they're both Asus cards, but oddly enough they are not the uh, same Asus cards because I bought these during the whole uh, Bitcoin mining craze, um, which uh, made these cards very hard to get a hold of. I basically bought these cards at the worst time possible because it was right before the R9 290X came out, and it was also during the Bitcoin mining craze. So these cost a lot for not that much um, performance, which was uh, unfortunate. And that's why I have two, because I originally, when these came out, uh, when I bought these, these were the best card that AMD had besides like the 7990, which is just two of these on one card. Um, so... Uh, I bought one thinking, oh, it's the best card they have, and you know, I am only doing 1080p gaming, so it should be good enough. And then the R9 290 and 290X came out, and I was like, well, I want a bit more performance, so that's why I bought another one. I bought the 
I originally bought the uh, ROG one, thinking I was only going to buy one card. And then after a couple months later, like five months later, I bought the uh, DirectCU2 one. Um, so let's start with the DirectCU2 one. And luckily, I did not lose all the screws for these. Somehow, miraculously, I was able to find them pretty quickly. Um, so let's just take these off. Um, these are Kraken G10, I think. That's what they were called, brackets. It's basically just a metal bracket. It came with a, a 90 mil fan, and it just mounts all of these. Uh, I forget what the, the these are originally called, but all these um round water cooling designs that everybody has. Like NZXTs were all based off these. Uh, Corsair had a couple, which the ones I have. Swift Tech, all, all those. Asatech. Maybe, I want to say, is what, what the original manufacturer is for these. Um, but yeah, and they also just came with a little back plate. Um, but let's take these off and put the original cooler on. So these only hold on with four screws, and then the whole thing comes off. Um, and then like this interlocks into these, and then that's, that's the bracket itself. And this is the cooler. Um, to use these with R9-280Xs, or any uh, Hawaii base card I think is what these are, you need this uh, copper shim, so you can see that there is in fact two layers of copper. There's the copper for the cooler. And then there's this thin copper shim that I bought from uh, EK um, because the GPU die itself is sunk in like this. This metal plate is above the GPU die, so you had to, um, uh, in order for it to make contact, you had to use a shim to um, raise the die height, basically, um, which uh, it, it worked. Um, but uh, it was a little bit more trouble in the end. So let's just get the uh, thermal paste off these and figure out how the hell to get these coolers back on. So this is the copper shim I'm talking about. This just sat right on top of the die um, to raise it up so the cooler can make contact with it. Just like a, a millimeter thin copper shim. You could you could have bought these from a EK when uh, these cards were still being sold. It was basically just to make it them compatible with um, uh, water general water blocks. So you could use like a CPU block on these, um, which is basically what I'm doing. It's just they were intended for. Uh, custom loops originally, but it's all the same thing in the end. And the whole design of this thing, uh, it has nuts on it that uh, basically go in. You can see the three labeled um, letters here, and those are different positions for different compat compatibility of different cards um, based on the whole spacing. And it's got this pad for the, uh, the uh, passive components on the back. So it doesn't short out against them. All right, so here is the uh, old card, uh, old cooler. Um, oddly enough, I don't think there is any. Um... Wait a second. What? That's confusing. Um, I don't think there is any uh, heat sinks that go on the. Uh, RAM or heat pads like in a modern card you'd have the, the CPU block extend out here and then you'd have thermal pads all around there. Um, oddly enough this is just a flat uh, surface on the uh, on the heat pipes so I don't really know how it made contact. I was told I need these it made sense, but uh, if this doesn't require it, then I'm not sure if I really did in the end.
All right, same deal for this guy. This one actually has a uh, heat sink on all of the uh, the VRM and the uh, memory chips. Well, most of them. It's missing them there, but uh, it has a lot more. Um, and then this one actually has a back plate, as you can see here. And uh, it's a little bit more complicated. This is a three slot card. And of course, the time I decide just to turn on the machine for a second to make sure the card still works and to attest the thermals, we get a lovely Windows update. Alright, so we're just uh, running Furmark here. And as you can see, that our attempts seem to be pretty good. Uh, we're not getting above 70 degrees, which is like incredibly good. Um, especially for an AMD card and the fan seems to be ramping up properly. Um, which is good. Uh, it is taking a while to uh, reach uh, equilibrium temperature, um, but uh, it doesn't seem like we're going to overheat anytime soon, and it seems like our performance seems uh, decent. So, this card is still good. So I have the second card in here now, and uh, I attempted to do the stress test, but as you can see, uh, bad things happened. I turned it on for two seconds and we spiked up to 94 degrees in about like half a second. Uh, so 
let's uh, take it apart and see what's wrong. You also see it's saying an amb uh, ambient of 52, uh, considering it's only probably about 22 degrees in this room. Uh, it's a little high, a little high. So let's uh, take it apart and try again. So attempt number two, uh, we did a little bit better this time. Uh, we did get up to 90 degrees, but it took about a couple minutes. Um, and uh, our ambient temperature is a lot lower now. So all I did was take apart the card, reapply the thermal paste, and then uh, screw it on again. Um, that is still not good enough because it was still rising when I hit 90 degrees when I killed it. Um, so it was probably going to go over 90, which uh, over 90 is not a good thing. And I remember way a couple years ago when I bought this card, it ran uh, pretty cool. It was at like 70 uh, something. So my only other thought is is that I installed the wrong screws for the back plate. Maybe these are slightly longer, so maybe we're not getting the right um, tension and the right uh, compression for the, uh, the die of the GPU. So I'll switch around the screws and see if that helps at all. Alright, so I did the third time and I'm still running through the same problem. Uh, so this time I put the copper chip back in because I'm just not convinced it's making contact with the heat spreader very well. Um, and I don't need these anymore, so even though it didn't come standard with the card, all I care is that it runs well for whoever I sell it to. So I will uh, put that in and see if that improves the situation at all. Alrighty, so uh, I installed it with the uh, copper chip in the middle and now it seems that we are going good. We are at 79 degrees. Um, we haven't petered out quite yet. Uh, we, we are slowing down, but I don't think this card is going to get above like 83 uh, degrees. Um, it is significantly louder than the other card, but I think it's just because the other card's a triple slot cooler. This one's a double slot cooler. Um, it is a little hotter, too. Uh, but it does appear that uh, our temps are within reason. Um, uh, and it does appear to be working. I'm not entirely sure why that uh, is required because it definitely didn't come stock with that um, unless my memory is just failing me it came stock with another one um, but uh, I don't think the cooler the heat spreader the heat pipes were making contact with the uh, GPU die uh, which would make sense so I don't know I do not know yeah, we're up to 80 degrees now. I think that's going to be... 80, 81 is going to be our, our peak here. I think it has warmed up in the room just a bit too. Um, I think it was 22 degrees when I tested the other card. It seems to be about 23. So maybe it's warmed up about a degree in here. So, yeah. That's that.